a growing problem and a going problem. More families are dealing with bedwetting than ever before. In the 1950s, most kids were dry through the night by age two, but times have changed. In 2003, they looked at that number again, and it certainly wasn't uh, two years of age. It was actually moved to five at that point. So I see what we see pretty much nationally, which is uh, 80% will be dry by five years of age. Bedwetting is considered primary if the child has never had a prolonged period of being dry through the night. It, it's development in short. And so what happens is there's a nervous, there's a nervous system where our brain and bladder are talking. There's a muscle within that bladder and all these different types of development need to take place before the patient's able to stay dry at night. In short, the bedwetter doesn't recognize the sensation of a full bladder. Experts do have training tips. The first, make sure the child isn't drinking too much too close to bedtime. Limit the fluids to about eight ounces, about three hours before bedtime, hold off on those fluids. Creating a path to success is important and making sure the child has easy access to the bathroom at night and proper lighting like a night light so they won't be afraid to get up in the dark. It may help to set goals and offer rewards. I recommend always getting a calendar so you could mark off what days we stay dry. Uh, maybe if we stay dry for a week, we could go ahead and pick a little gift or do some fun activity. And never, ever punish the child for wetting the bed. One, it, it doesn't help. And two, it winds up giving a lot of psychological stress to the patient that doesn't make this process any easier. Finally, be patient. Breaking the bedwetting cycle doesn't happen overnight. Overnight. For Lee Memorial Health System, I'm Amy Osher.